Social media infographics are shaping our political discourse, and young people's minds are on the chopping block. It's now trendy to despise patriotism and cancel those who think differently than us. I'm Cameron Arcan. I'm launching the Young Not Stupid interview series, powered by the Western Journal. I'll be interviewing a wide variety of guests through a conservative lens with people that will better equip you with the truth about what's happening in our country and around the globe. President Ronald Reagan once said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction, and we need to take that to heart. So tune in each Friday to the Young Not Stupid interview series to be prepared in the fight for the values that make America exceptional. Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of the Young Not Stupid interview series. I'm Cameron Arcan, and today I'm going to talk with you guys about climate solutions that aren't AOC's Green New Deal. So to start us off with that, I'm talking with the American Conservation Coalition's Communications Director, Carly Matthews, um, to really discuss um, how conservatives can be good stewards of the environment um, in our lives and in governmental policy as well. So Carly, I was wondering if you could start us off by telling me a little bit about the overall mission of the American Conservation Coalition. Yeah, well, first of all, Cameron, thanks for having me on. Um, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, but ACC was founded in 2017 because our staff really saw kind of this gap in the environmental movement that conservatives just weren't engaging. And we knew that conservatives cared about the environment and wanted to protect it, um, but they weren't talking about it. And so our our overarching goal really is just to engage more conservatives in this conversation, show conservatives that environmentalism and their conservative principles are compatible, and then ultimately, you know, moving forward, um, progressing climate solutions that are good for our economy and good for our planet. Yeah, and something to kind of note on that is there's a lot of polling out there that shows that regardless of party affiliation, um, young conservatives and young liberals um, do care about the environment and environmental issues. Um, but kind of where this issue is, is that the solutions that are being proposed might not necessarily be very business friendly or very um, community friendly just in general. So sorry if you could kind of dive into um, some of the solutions that you guys are talking about that don't involve these really radical moves that we're seeing by the progressive left. Yeah, this is a great question. And I think kind of the biggest hesitance for conservatives to really dive into environmental issues has been that the solutions that dominate are big government solutions. They're top down solutions that seem incompatible with our principles. So then we kind of think caring about the environment at all is incompatible with our principles, but that's just not true. And I think our fall campaign really highlights this. It's called Rooted in America. And we're showing the importance of natural climate solutions. So if you think back to fourth grade science, perhaps, um, a tree conducts photosynthesis, right? So it takes in carbon dioxide, releases oxygen. That's reversing climate change in real time. So over a lifetime, a tree can sequester about a ton of carbon. So when you multiply that across a whole forest or um, you know, the entire world, that's a significant amount of carbon sequestration that we're seeing from trees, kind of the original carbon capture machine. Um, so we're talking about planting trees, restoring ecosystems, and even sustainable agriculture this fall um, to really show that there are climate solutions that work within this framework that we already have. You know, it doesn't require a complete government overhaul to tackle climate change. Yeah, and I completely agree with that because there are ways that we can do this now we throw, I'm going to get on this in a minute, I kind of open with this as well. Um, when we think about these climate solutions, thing that comes to mind is the Green New Deal and is all these um, progressive activism um, kind of movements. Like you have the Sunrise Movement who um, they're constantly pushing even Democratic politicians and they're like, no, you guys are going too far um, with all of this. And we, see, we saw it all the time when I lived in California and how that impacts um, forest management and different basic things. And they really end up um, hurting themselves um, when it comes to a lot of these policies. So kind of going more into that, what are maybe some policy victories or things that you're working with kind of um, with conservative politicians um, in Washington to really see make these changes that you guys are proposing? How are you making them happen? 
Yeah, absolutely. So I just mentioned sustainable agriculture um, and actually a bill just passed the Senate earlier this summer um, called the Growing Climate Solutions Act. And more Republicans in the Senate actually voted for this act than Democrats. Um, so it passed 92 to 8, and I think only three Republicans voted no, five Democrats voted no. And essentially what this program would, this legislation would do, would help the USDA lower barriers to voluntary carbon credit markets. So by kind of engaging in natural climate solutions, farmers can actually financially benefit by being paid by a company to naturally sequester carbon. So that's just one example of, you know, how these solutions are, they're bipartisan, but Republicans are really championing them because they allow kind of the folks on the ground to take climate action, not just the government. Yeah, and kind of going off on that, I want to also address maybe some concerns that our audience has when they hear about maybe any sort of climate solutions. They might even be skeptical of certain environmental issues in of themselves, and I'd be lying if I said I if I haven't had those same reservations about those issues when I hear a lot of the solutions that are coming out there. So we have a lot of people who maybe are listening to this and they're concerned that when they hear climate action, whether it's coming from the progressive left or if it's even coming from the right, um, uh, that natural gas and coal jobs, whenever these climate actions take place, are going to automatically get cut and be replaced um, by renewable energy. And whenever we hear about that with President Joe Biden um, gutting the Keystone Pipeline project and instead replacing it or saying they're going to replace these things with renewable energy projects, it rarely ends up coming to fruition on that. So how do we address those concerns or at least reassure people that there is a way to address climate change without gutting the energy sector of good paying American jobs? Yeah, Cameron, that's a great question. And I think it's been a real failing of the environmental movement to not include these traditional energy workers at the table in conversations. Um, you know, you have John Kerry going to a coal community and saying, you guys are all going to build solar panels and it's going to be great. You know, that's not how you talk to someone who for fossil fuels, you know, that's been a huge part of their livelihood. Um, so I think the biggest part is really engaging these stakeholders in conversations, seeing how the industry can contribute to the climate fight without, you know, going away entirely. And I think we are seeing that, um, especially with natural gas. The U.S. has led the world in emissions reductions because of the shale boom and natural gas production. So that's certainly very important, you know, in the short term, but also can be a part of the future long term as well with the right technologies like carbon capture and, and other technologies to make fossil fuels you know, cleaner and, and still part of the mix. Um, ACC supports an all of the above energy approach and we see you know, different communities need different sources of energy to get the, the electricity that they need. So I think there's, there's a way that we can kind of engage all stakeholders. And this includes, you know, in conjunction with our Rooted in America campaign, this includes farmers and ranchers and foresters. There are so many different stakeholders in this climate fight that, that need to be engaged and, and really need to be at the table. Yeah, and I would agree with that too. But kind of going into my last question here for you is, um, back in Orange County, a lot of coastal districts in California and just across the country, um, one thing that Republicans do so well in those districts that maybe a lot of other parts of the country struggle with is kind of campaigning on like protecting the coast, protecting the natural environment. And we've really only seen an inkling of that maybe in Southern California, maybe in some other coastal Republican leaning districts in other parts of the country as well, maybe Florida too. Um, but my last question for you is, we're about to dive into another midterm election. People are announcing their campaigns, hitting the ground running for the primary elections. How should Republicans um, target their environmental messaging? Should they touch it in certain places? Or what solution should they be proposing to these voters? Yeah, absolutely. I think going back to your question about polling, young Americans especially want to hear about climate change and they want to hear about the environment. Ignoring the issue completely, I think, is, is a terrible idea on the campaign on the campaign trail. Um, we should be trying to reach younger voters as conservatives and not just kind of brushing off their concerns. But even older voters in you know places like New Orleans or Miami, Florida, you know, those voters know that 
hurricanes are coming and they're more severe than they used to be. And there, there are ways that we can make climate change local in your own backyard. We can talk to farmers about, you know, conditions in their fields, droughts or um, severe storms. We can talk in Miami about sea level rise. So I think what's really important is not talking about a huge Green New Deal or, or talking about climate change as, you know, having to do with polar bears. It's about putting climate change in your own backyard um, and showing your constituents how you're going to tackle the issues that climate change is causing that really affect our lives day to day. Mm -hmm. And I think that's super important too, because we have this kind of brand of climate alarmism um, that we have really no way of countering. It's really great to see groups like the American Conservation Coalition um, really getting in deep with these issues and taking away the monopoly that the progressive left has on this conversation. So thank you so much, Carly, for coming and talking with me today. Um, if you guys like more content like this, more conversations like these, be sure to like and subscribe to the Western Journal YouTube channel. And for more stories to help better equip you with the truth about what's going on around our country, head on over to westernjournal.com. I'm Cameron Arcan, signing out.